Ah. Hi everyone and welcome to learning how to spin your Samoyed Spur. Uh, here we have some products that I've spun with Theo's fur. This is Theo. He's a two-year-old Samoyed and I love him mainly because he's a good boy but also because he can produce uh, yarn. So here is a blanket that I made out of Theo's yarn. He really enjoys it. <laughs> um, and then here's a pillow that I also made with natural dye on both sides. So everything that you need is, what you probably have already, is bags and bags of old fur that were gathered from their shed. Usually Theo will shed once to twice a year and it'll all come out in clumps. So it's really good, dense fur. Um, and then you will need a wood spinner. This is just a hand spinner. I'll put the link online on the description box. And this is a um, one magic needle, which is two needles, but with a large tube in between. So this is for knitting things like blankets, things that are much longer than the pillow. Other times you can use just two needles, but this is really good for larger projects. You'll also need two slicker brushes and shampoo and conditioner. So first step, we're going to wash all of this wool um, to get it nice and clean because it is dirty. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. So here we go. I've put all of the wool into the bathtub and I'm now using the shower wand to dampen it before I use the shampoo and conditioner just as you would. And here are the shampoo and conditioners that I use, top paw, whitening, and then this conditioner is very, very good for getting the wool nice and soft. So I'm just using pretty hot water. Theo's here. Supervising. And you can tell it gets pretty gross. This is not the most appealing process of the spinning. Here we go, we've dampened all of the fur. It took a few minutes, mainly because Samoyed fur is very water repellent, as some of you may know. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the shampoo on. Now you can see, just after the shampoo, it's gotten a lot brighter. It may need a second one, depending on how many trips to the dog park you've taken. All right, this is about as white as it's gonna get, so I'm gonna go ahead and put lots of conditioner on here. This is really the step where you want to detangle any of these mats and be careful not to be too aggressive with the washing stage. Otherwise, you're going to get um, more clumps like this, a little bit harder to um, cart in the carting process. So be pretty gentle with the fur and just get out any of those pieces of grass or whatever your dogs picked up along the way. In Ontario here we have lots of burrs so there's some little burrs that get into the fur here you just pick out and go down the drain <laughs> clog up the drain with all the sand like fur
Usually I bring it to the side corner and just brush it around like this. See any pieces like this, just like a leaf. It's hard to do with one hand, I'm trying to show you, but. Sometimes it can get clumped up in there. And then I just drop it down the drain. See, there's one of those little burrs in there. Just pick that out. A lot of these will come off in the carding stage as well, which is, I'll show you later in between two slicker brushes. And I'm gonna finish this off and I'll show you what it looks like in a bit. All right, so I've gotten all of the fur sort of squeezed out on the side of the bathtub. It's still going to have quite a bit of water in it. So I just lay a towel flat on the floor and spread out all of the little clumps of fur along the towel. You'll see that it really gets much smaller from that big peg of fur just to these little clumps. Sometimes maybe a big bag of fur will yield a few um, balls of yarn. So. Really, if you wanna make a big blanket, it'll take maybe a couple years to uh, collect all that fur, depending on how furry or small it is. Yeah, so after this is done, I just try and spread it out a bit evenly. And then I go ahead and just roll it from here. Again, this is kinda of hard to do with just one hand I'm rolling it and you can see it's already pretty damp and then just squeeze it at each step of the way and then I bring it out to the living room <laughs> there's a little bark boy to <laughs> toy and just lay it out to dry. Of course, if you have an outdoor space to dry this in the sun, it's nice, but the birds might just come and take it <laughs> or you might get bugs in it. So just worry about that. And then I leave it here to dry overnight and lay it as flat as possible. So these little clumps all get dry. Um, just sort of pull it to lay it flat and I'll see you in 24 hours. Okay, it is the morning after. All of the yarn has dried and it looks something like this. So it's light and fluffy. <laughs> We're gonna make it a little bit more fluffy with the carding process. Here we have two slicker brushes that we're going to need. So here's an example of one of the bits of yarn that is now dried. And what we're going to do is take our one of our slicker brushes and try and put it onto this slicker brush. Now the purpose of this is called carding is to pull all of the fibers of hair into the same direction so that we can then turn it into what's called roving. That's about um, enough for this process. Move this one out of the way. And here we have the other slicker brush. We're just going to go down on this slicker brush, see how it transfers, and just continue like this, pulling all of the fibers in that same direction. And we can do this a few times just to make sure they're all in the same direction. I'm going to go 
over. And the slicker brush will then pick it up onto this one. And see how there's little clumps there? We're just gonna get those clumps out. So then use the other slicker brush to do that. It'll transfer back on. And we just do this process until you see all of the fibers in the right direction. So all of the fibers are pretty much in the same direction there, as well as here. I'm just going to transfer this back like this and use this other slicker brush to pull it over and tamp it down like that and then pull it off the slicker brush. So we end up with something like this. I know it doesn't look all that great, but they're all relatively same direction fiber and we're just going to roll it. I just roll it on my pant leg. It's not that much. And here is what we have called roving. And this is what you're going to do to spin into yarn. It's what you're going to use to spin into yarn. So that is our roving. We'll just set this aside and continue the process. So we take our little clumped bit of yarn, put it on to the slicker brush. A lot of the time less is more. If you go with too much, um, it doesn't work all that well. So do that. over, take it off the slicker brush, it's almost roving but we just need to meld it all into one and there's your roving. So that will take quite a long time to turn it all into roving. Um, oftentimes more professional um, yarn makers, <laughs> um, they have huge carding tools. Sometimes they're about this long or even this long um, and industrial ones have a whole drum that uh, turns around in circles, carting it all in the same direction. So these are two little uh, brushes you probably already have in your house. So for the lay person doing this just for fun and for their own dog, it's, I think, good enough. I also found it incredibly hard to find carding material online um, to find the carding brushes, and they were very expensive. So this uh, gets the job done. It just takes a little bit longer and... And there you go. All right, now we will move on to the spinning process. So here is the wooden dowel. Um, I'll put this link online. So we have the hook at the top, very useful. We also have these notches on the sides of the tool to hold the yarn. So with one hand, we're going to hold the tool and then this hand, we're going to hold the roving. And I find um, if it's in a bigger clump, 
just sort of loosen up the roving a little. You don't want to pull it too much that it separates, but you don't want too much in one spot. And here we're just going to use this hook to grab onto the yarn. And what it's doing is through the process of spinning it, it's going to create that yarn. Hence spinning wool. And as you pull it on the other end, we're getting thinner and thinner strands. So you have to practice this quite a bit, but spin in the same direction. It's spinning here, and that's going to put tension onto the yarn. You can see it's just spun. You can see the little theophers. And as we spin it, we're pulling, and I just put it in between my legs and then let go of the tension and then it pops right in. And then these notches are great. You just put it in between one of the notches and then twist it around here. When you're done, the other notch and then back up to the hook and continue spinning. In between your legs, you just sort of pull it all, it's all in the same direction. So it makes a very nice fiber, let go, spin it, hold it here, pull, let go. Again, spinning it, hold it in both places, hold it in between your legs, let go. And then now that's about enough where we can put it on the tool here and continue the same process. So when we're done or almost done, our one piece of roving, I would say about this much left, we can connect it to the next piece. So what I do is I just overlap it and almost you want to try to incorporate the, one, the next piece of roving with the previous one. So here, this will spin into the yarn and this will be the next piece. So I'll just demonstrate that. That's all spun into the yarn. This piece we can sort of take off. It's got a little bit of extra. And with the more spinning, it will incorporate the next piece. So let me just move this down so the camera can show you. See now I've incorporated the next piece of roving. Just want it the same thinness all the way through, spinning, and then pulling on to here. So let's say it ripped off. No worries, we can just do the same thing, overlap it again. And here, spin it, otherwise it'll fall off again. And keep spinning, just keep spinning. Again, this little piece doesn't need to be there. And once you practice more, you'll find that it gets more consistent all the way through. 
but at the start you'll have it a little bit lumpy and that's okay. And just keep doing this until this is full. And then we'll be ready to set the spin in the next process. And I will keep doing this until then. All right, so here we are, a few more pieces of roving later. And I just wanted to show you how to tie off um, before we move on to the next stage. So once we reach, you know, we've um, got a little piece like this, just um, spin it all close right until the end. Stop it, and then I usually just tie it in a knot. Just to maybe a few knots. <laughs> And there we go. Now it you still want to hold on to it. You don't want this to go loose. So usually what I do is I just go like this, move it back on itself, and put it down on itself to hold the spin. This is also just a little bit of yarn compared to all um, of the wool that I had washed. So this was only about three or four little ropes worth of yarn. And I'll show you how much is left. So we still have that huge towels worth. So this one bag should make about perhaps three, four, five even big, bigger balls of yarn. And I'm just stopping um, here for the purpose of the video instead of bringing it out all the way, all the way to the end. And here is the next step. Um, what we're going to do is set the spin. So this is all twisted and you want to have it relax in place so that it won't unspin itself and separate the fibers. So this is what's called a nitty knotty. What I did was I went to Home Depot um, and I got just PCV, PVC piping and cut it, had them cut it in four, five little rods. And then I got these connectors so that way it both moves um, but it can also be in place and then I can put it away in the closet easily. So what we're going to do is take this nitty knotty. I'm just going to put it down like so. And I'm going to take this part of my yarn and go to the closest, I might as well show you here wrap it around and tie it onto one of the ends. Just like so. I think I'll tie it once more. It's a little hard to show you in the camera. Okay. See how when this unspins, it will just break off on itself. So we want to keep it nice and tight there. And I'm just going to spin this a little so I can put a knot in it. I'm not sure if this is 100% necessary, but yeah, so now we have this tight, we can roll it down and then bring it up to the top end, bring it down to the bottom end, bring it up 
to the first end, just follow the same pattern that you were using before. So here I went down and around, left, down, back up to the right. So it's not 100% necessary to follow the same pattern as I am, but follow the same pattern that you're using to keep it consistent so you don't uh, get them crossed. We're at the end and it doesn't quite go to the top here. It's pretty long. So I'm just going to tie it off right at the bottom there. Just loop it around itself. Take it off the wooden dowel and just tie it in. So the next step is putting it in a hot water bath in the tub for 20 minutes. What this will do is it'll take these fibers and set the twist on them. And it'll just relax there in place so that when we unravel it, it'll come out, um, it won't unspin and it'll be yarn. All right, it's been 20 minutes and I've taken the Nitty Naughty PVC piping out of the bathtub. And now is the time to unwrap it and dry it. So I've taken all the PVC piping out of the skein, which is what this is called. And now we're left with just this long white skein. Now the next step of this process, we're going to take our skein. And what I've done is just those two loose ends. I tied a knot with some string in the middle just so that they don't unravel when I am going through this process. And what we're going to do is try and felt each one of these strings. And by doing this, you get rid of those little loose hairs and it felts together so it doesn't just shed. Um, so what we're going to do is actually slap it against the ground, a little bit aggressive, a little fun. Just keep moving, keep moving along the, the process, doing each side. You can complete this process for the next few minutes until each one looks pretty um, singular and felted. So we've now got our skein and each one is felted. You can tell there's a little imperfections in some areas, but that's what makes it hand spinning. And we're just going to leave this outside in the sun for it to dry and then going to put it into a ball tomorrow morning. So I've gone ahead and knitted just a small square. This is what um, I could knit from that little ball of wool. So that's about what you're looking at from a little ball of wool. And I've put laundry detergent and hot water in the sink. And this step, we're going to felt the yarn again. Um, this is what will make it shed less and all of these little fibers will stick together and it'll look really floofy and dry when it is um, ready. So I'm just going to put it in the water, let it soak in a little, and just be very gentle with it at first, but we're going to gently rub the yarn together each step of the way. Slowly do this for about, I would say, five minutes, bringing it into the water, squeezing out the water, and rubbing it together in all different directions. It doesn't have to be circular, but you want to cover every piece of it. After about five minutes of felting, you can see that the knitting has gotten a lot closer 
to each other. And then once this dries, it'll be much more fluffy um, and nice to touch. So next we want to put our recently felted little piece of knitting into the dryer on low for about five minutes. Here's an example of the dried little patch of knitting that we made out of that one ball of yarn. Here's an example of what it'll look like in a few months. And then if you wait over time, it should look a little bit more floofy and matured. It only gets better with time. Yeah, so you can make a scarf, you can make a blanket, you can make a sweater if you wanted, pillows, and there's some other ideas for knitting projects that I have. And if this video gets a lot of likes, then maybe uh, comment below and ask if you want me to do a natural dyeing episode um, where I can dye the wool pink, this little pink wool, or yellow, um, or this sort of off, off colored beige gold <laughs> um, color. All right, bye for now, and thanks for watching.